Welcome back to WHBC TV. I'm Dr. Ty Adeboboye, lead pastor of Wellman Heights Baptist Church. It's a new day dawning, and it's time to sing the Lord's song again. I welcome you with Christ's joy. And this morning, you're going to be hearing a wonderful message uh, from one of our elders here at Wellman Heights Baptist Church, uh, Dickie Mill Morgan. He's going to be blessing you with the word of God. Why don't you take a pen and a paper, grab a cup of coffee, and listen to the word of God as the word gets into you. God bless, and I'll be back to come pray with you. Amen. God is good. He is always, uh, he's always, oh, he never gives us more than we can handle. And that's the good news. And that's the good news of God. So today, as I was preparing, I says, you know, I said, Lord, what am I going to, I was looking for a fresh word. You know, that. The, the Bible says that the children of Israel got fresh manna daily. And in our preparation, in my preparation for this, I was saying, Lord, what do you want your people to hear? Because I'm not here to perform. But I'm here to inform what the Lord wants me to do. Whatever the Lord wants me to do, that's what I'll do. If the Lord wants me to throw this message away, it's fine. But it's, it's the Lord's house, and we are here to do His work. It's not a show, but it's God working through limited people like us. Because God will use anyone who says, I'm available to do His work. Amen? And He does that well. And as I was preparing, I said, Lord, what do you want me to speak on? And... It was so funny because for weeks I couldn't get a word. I didn't have a word. I didn't have a scripture. I didn't have a verse. And I was saying, I was panicking. I was saying, I'm just going to take an old message that I have and rejig it around and change the name so that I can be here and don't look bad. I mean, in fact, if I had a backup speaker like Deacon Colin, I said, Deacon Colin, can you help out a brother here? Because I am not hearing from the Lord. But God is never late. He is, he is always on time. He's always on time. And the word that I want you to hear this morning is faith works. Because I needed faith to prepare this message on faith. You see, God always test you when he asks you to do something if he asks you to speak on giving he will test you on giving if he asks you to speak on building he will test you on building it's so ironic but I don't know why God does that I ask him all the time why are you testing me on this I'm not hearing the word I'm not hearing the word and so I just started frantically to fix flip through files and files of notes that I had <laughs> but nothing came up and I sense the Lord saying faith works and I had to really exercise faith to come here this morning and today I want to draw your attention to 1 Kings 17 1 Kings 17 and we're going to read from verse 8. But in, in 1 Kings 17, I'm just going to read from verse 7. And it says here, the widow at Zarephath. It says, sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. You see, when, when God speaks, He always supplies. Because before the, the prophet went there, the Lord told him, Listen, I'm going to send you somewhere, but when you get there, I'm going to confirm it. And if, the, if you think the Lord is speaking to you and the Lord says, go Toronto you're gonna to see someone with a yellow suit and you show up Toronto and there's no one you better run 
because the Lord always confirms his word like he did here with the prophet he said when you go there you will see a widow and so said so done when the prophet get there there was a widow God is not a liar you see we might tell we might tell someone hey wait for me at York Mills bus station <laughs> I'll meet you there at 9 and sometimes we never show up but we are mere men we are mere men I'll continue to read it says here in the Bible I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food so he went to Zarephath when he came to the to the town gate a widow you see the confirmation it says a widow was there where there is the widow was there at the gate where the Lord told him she would be so he says here when he came to the gate a widow was there gathering sticks he called to her and asked because you know what he wanted to make sure this was the widow and sometimes when we see something we must question it a little bit further for confirmation just like the prophets do here you mustn't always take people's word but ask God is he really saying this because sometimes we are so fickle that we hear some new faith comes out and we just go do it without questioning if it's really from God and so often we lose our time we get even further hurt we lose our money and all this and we blame God you see the prophet was smart here God gave him a word and he and when he went there he saw the person but he still asked a question and it says here he called to her and asked would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may drink well that's all right it's good enough that he asked for water but then he went on to ask for even more you know sometimes when we give people an inch they take a meter so the prophet being a man he says and, and he says here would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may drink and as she was going to get it as she was going to get it he called excuse me e excuse me lady why are you getting that water can you bring me something to eat you see somebody might ask you hey can you can you give me five and when you pull out the wallet they might say is, is, do you have a 20 there instead because they're looking for more <laughs> the prophet wasn't different so he said and he and he called it and he said and he called it and he said and and bring me please a piece of bread and here's what the lady says she said in verse 12 as surely as the Lord your God lives she replied I don't have any bread only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die you see this lady was to her wits end everything had run out Canada pension had run out unemployment had run out the government was stopped giving her neighbors wasn't putting up with her again the church closed their doors and so the food there was no food here she had nothing that's what the Bible says she had nothing she was gathering some sticks and she had a little bit of flour and oil so that she may eat it and she and her son would die you see if there was someone or some place or some organization the Bible would have stated that but the lady was desperate you but faith works you see God always only ask for what he knows you have 
when the prophet asked the lady God told him that she had a little sometimes God asks you for something and you hold it to, to it so tight that you wouldn't let go but God already knows how much you have it's no surprise when he asked the prophet says give me a little bit of water and then he asked for a little bit of bread when that happened God wants to work something out whether it may be time whether it may be money whether it may be obedience he always uses people like you people like us to accomplish his purpose you see sometimes we think we're looking for an angel sometimes you're looking for the neighbor sometimes when pastor speaks and he said you you tap your neighbor because you never think it's for you you always think it's for somebody else sometimes when we get corrected we think it's for my brother but God knows what he wants to accomplish you see his purpose always requires sacrifice always require no pain no gain it's a biblical principle his purpose always makes us think intensely if it's something you're doing for God and you don't have to think you don't have to worry about it you have to question is it really from God his purpose always gives us doubts his purpose always gives us doubt because God's purpose are so big that we cannot comprehend what it's for so when God asks us to do something obviously as human beings we are limited and we're gonna doubt it always makes us think a second hey let's go there but it says hey uh, really that's a little bit tough but that's God knowing who you are like he did you remember the, 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 the two famous servants when the master said hey would you help me do this and one immediately says yes master I'll help you I'm your boy sister Murray you can call on me if you need a ride anytime how quickly we answer people but guess what when the when you showed up and you was waiting for me I didn't show up I wasn't there but I was quick to answer I'll give you a ride just like the servants here but there was a second one when you when you ask for a ride you say hey Eves give me a ride uh, I'm not sure sister Marie I'm not sure but he went away and thought about it and when I didn't show up brother Eves came in because the Spirit of the Lord was speaking to him you see he wasn't pretending so that he could look good like I did you see sometimes we pretend to say who's gonna give the first thousand dollars and the whole church starts to wave their hand like if it's carnival but guess what when the time came nothing was given the ones who didn't raise their hands was thinking about it but the Spirit of God was inside them and when the time came the conviction of the Lord said hey listen would you step up and the ones who were pretending that it was meek was the one with the strength to give people are fickle <laughs> we see them all the time as you read here in the Bible you have to be careful what you do you see this woman had to be careful what she eat because it says here in the Bible and she was telling the prophet she says I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die some things can kill you says it in God's word here some foods kill <laughs> 
and some food is required for seed you see this God had given this woman a seed that's why it says the widow's seed God had given her some water, some oil and some bread as a seed but she thought it was to eat so she started the human way by gathering sticks by heating up the oven by turning up the stove by mixing the flour see like the widow with the bread and that oil the Bible says if you seek him first and his righteousness all these other things would be added on see, this is what Elijah was trying to show the lady the Spirit of the Lord was using Elijah to encourage the lady to sow first to seek ye first sometimes the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to us and asking us in our hearts to do something for him but we are so busy we cannot hear and we are busy because we want to be busy doing nothing running on the spot going nowhere in life sowing but not reaping saving but not seeing anything working but it goes away for thus saith the Lord the barrel of meat shall not waste neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent rain you see the Lord said in his word and if you begin to read his word and you begin to spend time with him you will get the confidence to say and to know the Lord says I'll never leave you or forsake you but you will only know it when you read his word so often we get confused so often our emotions take us through and we have to look for a human motive basically we are living dead we are living but we're dead the Spirit of Lord is not inside us you see if you sow in good grounds you will reap a good harvest and there's many people who is sowing a mist but they're not reaping anything their crops is being eaten by locusts the harvest is being eaten by bugs you see this happened in the Old Testament to Haggai and to the people when the people came back from bondage and God says go build they said yes but guess what happened when time came they got so caught up in building their own houses that when the prophet says Haggai says hey God sets the bill you know what it says no I can't afford it but meanwhile they were there extending their houses they were there buying new cars so you know what God did all their work that they was doing the Bible says God put hole in their pockets they were gathering money and they wasn't sure how it was not staying in their wallets they were working hard but nothing was staying God the Bible says not man God put hole in their pockets some of us might be wondering what's happening to our pockets is the government stealing it no some of us might be wondering how, how what's happening to the to this interest rate I'm just getting 0 0.1 percent from the bank that's the problem no the problem is you're not sowing in God's house you're not soon in God's house you see God always call things that are not like if they were so if you saw a dollar or you give your time in the church for some reason although you get tired God redeems your time and the people who is busiest you can always get them to do something for you the people who does nothing does nothing 
the prophet wanted the lady to mix the word with faith because faith works because faith works see the Bible says we can do all things not some things all things through Christ who strengthens us but listen the all things you can do it's only through Christ if you try to do those things by yourself there's no strength see you cannot be lazy on your work for God you cannot be lazy on your work some of you might say well hey I'm not lazy you know I work seven days a week hole in your pocket oh yeah and the penny is adding up to a penny you see be diligent in your beliefs put in action to your work you see if you are the best they will say faith without works is dead so you have to put your faith and your work together for it to work there must be a mind thing before the physical thing could happen if the physical thing happens and the mind is not there you're lost so don't just speak it do it you see giving is the secret to receiving and somebody might say hey Sashi sister Sashi how come you already receiving something little do, do they know that you're so busy giving and when you come with your purse and it looks really big and somebody says, wow what's going on they, they might say what is she doing right the question to ask is to, the, to yourself is what am I doing wrong you see always be in a spirit of giving when someone says to give something even if you can't give what they ask give something the prophet was asking the lady to give a little bit of the oil and the flour make a little bread he specified a little but do something remember he who so sparingly reaps sparingly God's word is true God's word never ever lies you see we should always be looking to see when God will create a situation for us so sometimes there's a neighbor or somebody at work or, or sometimes you might see a vagrant or some poor person and the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you to do something out of the ordinary if it's something good and it's out of the ordinary it's from God the devil is not going to ask you to do something good he's the father of lies so if you think well um, yeah, the Lord is speaking to me to give 20 bucks but ah, that's the devil and you're holding on to that 20 you'll hear the song says hole in your pocket for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he and here's why he gave us power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant on earth that he may establish his covenant on wood on earth that's how faith works see this passage had a lot of meat and I'm just going to take you deeper deeper into this scripture and you will see uh, the widow like you never seen her before and you will see things in 3d as I was preparing myself I began to see this passage open to me it was three or four in the morning I was tired I mean I was going back on the coffee you know so I mean I just wanted to be up you know so that I could you know have my eyes open but I fell asleep and I set the clock for half an hour I said well 4 30 and then I pressed snooze and then it went to 5 30 6 30 but the word of the Lord it's good it's alive amen let, let, let's continue to read let's continue to read 
from 13 going on to verses 17 to 20. Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, What do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? The prophet get puffed up. Like some of us would. And he says here in verse 19, Give me your son. Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying, and laid him on the bed. Then he cried out to the Lord. Then he cried out to the Lord. You see, the word sometimes, the word sometimes later in the text here, the word sometimes later, when you see the word sometimes later in the text or in your Bible, when you read it, you must ask yourself, if the word is saying sometime later, what's before? So if I say it used to be so, then how it used to be before? The same question. Sometime later reminds us of how the good old days was. That's what the writer of the text was trying to get our attention. So he says, sometime later, or sometime before, or long ago, when we could have leave our house open and we didn't have a key, it was safe. The same context. See, what happened before, I believe, as we read from verses 8 and 9, what happened before, I believe, was God was beginning to find a way to show His power. God was starting the process. God was trying to get the attention. You see, faith is the step between promise and assurance. Faith is the step between promise and assurance. Every miracle, every miracle, large or small, begins with an act of obedience. You want a miracle to happen to you? It will. But whether it may be large or small, it begins with an act. Not a thought. God will give you a thought and He will ask you to put actions into that thought. And only after you put action... I mean, if you're home believing for a job, but you aren't putting no resume. Hey, you're not going to get a job. You're missing the action. I remember when I was younger, st studying, wink, wink, for my exam. Have a book, a friend came to help me. And he was studying, and I was sleeping. And that was my tutor. It wasn't too long later that I failed. I remember punching the wall. And getting mad with God because I prayed. I mean, I was praying, Lord, help me to pass this exam. But I was quickly asleep. Faith didn't attach to action. <laughs> Faith didn't attach to action. So guess what happened? I failed. My prayer was earnest. I blame God too. Like we so seldom do like we so seldom do. See, because we may not see the solution until we take the first step of faith. God just wants you to take something small. He says, come close to me and I'll come close to you. But we want God to come close to me. The Bible said, no, you come close to me and I'll come close to you. You see, the Bible says we must walk by faith not by sight Hollywood is great at reversing this biblical principle in fact they're so good we are so bogged down walking by sight not by faith we believe the lie because it's so good 
It's so good. They are so good. We got to see it to believe it. The Bible says you got to believe it to see it. That's why it says in the Bible, you must walk by faith, not by sight. See, you must, you can, you can see something by just the, by something looks good but it's deceiving. Remember when Jesus was seeing that fig tree looking like it had bananas, looking like it had figs on it, and the trees was blossoming, and the tree looked like it had a lot of fruits in it. And sometimes we see people like if they're doing good and they're all dressed up and they're driving in nice cars and they're living in their good houses. They're like the fig tree. It only appears to blossom, but there's no fruits. Deception. See, it's like someone going to the desert. And when you're going through the desert, they say you see mirage and you get thirsty. And you say a few steps down, you see a really nice lake of water. And with your last breath, you begin to run to that lake. You begin to run to that lake. And you plunge. Only to realize that it was sand. Deception. Like it, it was for the widow and Elijah. And like it is for, for us sometimes, we take that plunge only to realize that it's not water. We do that thing only to realize that it was wrong. You see, farming that led the lady, there was no food and there was no flour. You see, farming was bad. Farming was bad. But things was about to get a little harder. Because when you think things are harder and it's recession, the government raises the taxes. Or, some, or your car breaks down. Or the winter was colder. Or the summer was hotter. We can't catch a break. If it's not winter being colder, it's summer being hotter. You see, as we can see, the widow's son later the widow's son as we read later tested her faith you see she even began to ask questions you know she says she questioned God she lost hope because things when things got harder she thought well God can't be in this if it was, it would have got easier. But God was about to show his power. God was about to show his power. Listen, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. This lady who is questioning God now about why things are getting tough is the same lady who saw her little bit of flour and oil lasted every day the Bible says in fact it was so much flour and so much oil that she not only fed her family her son she fed her entire family every single day she saw the miracle of God she tasted the miracle of God but when things got a little bit harder she questioned the God who provided like we do so often sometimes Lord have mercy how quickly we forget the goodness of God when our family was being fed you see we all do it let the good times roll <laughs> you see it becomes a habit and not a good habit you see, faith was working then for the lady before she started to complain against God. Faith was working then and is still working now. We all here today, we all here today may have experienced God's provision 
his peace and soon after and soon after opt out opt out, opt out of what opt out like the lady when she was on trial when trials came away she began to doubt God you see these things were happening because God put them in motion and why did he put them in motion in order to test and build our faith that's why everything in our lives happens because God wants to test and build something in our lives that he know is weak and why he wants you to be weak because the Bible says for when you are weak then you are but you want to be strong so you can be strong it's not biblical that's human strength but God said I want to give you spiritual strength so he said when he tests you when you are weak then you are strong that's God's strength the world's strength would say when you are strong you are strong well we know what happened to Samson with all his strength when he was using badly you see faith was working then for her and faith is still working for us here at Wilma as many of you sitting here seeing the building project get completed it was working then and it's still working now you see despite the onlookers and the doubter God says for I am not a man that I should lie here it is faith without work is dead you're sitting in the sanctuary God said he'll build he said I am building my house and the gates of hell would not prevail you see the Spirit of the Lord will say here's what the Spirit of the Lord will say will you accept it I mean my faith will you push through your comfort zone to grab hold of this faith you might hear that still voices saying or oh, you can just sit back <laughs> and allow God to come in and comfort you in your daily lives you see Elijah being human also was weak <laughs> and why I said he was weak remember remember early on when Jezebel was chasing the, the guy he outran the chariots beat up on 150 prophets saw the the fire from heaven what happened soon after that he got a word and he ran like a baby you see Elijah being a human also cried out and, I, 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 and it says here it says here in the Bible in verse 20 it says then he Elijah cried out to the Lord he says oh my God how much time you how much time we have showed that in a wrong our house in the wrong way we took a hammer and we smash our finger and he goes oh my god we've kicked the step walking up and we shouted oh my god we hit somebody at the light and he goes oh my god we get a pink slip from the job that you was cursing how miserable it was and you cried to the Lord oh my God the same job you was cursing all the, the way along I don't know why I'm working here would God release me and with the next breath you got a pink slip you should be praise the Lord you goes oh my God I thought they needed me here I thought I was the big thing in the job oh my God 
Elijah was no different to us. He credited the Lord. But he himself was being tested by God in this situation with the widow. They was being tested together. You see, he think he was maybe bigger than the widow. But he didn't know God was also testing him in this situation. You see, the church, sometimes we all have to be tested in order to have a testimony. But we have no testimony because we don't want to be tested. That's what Deacon Colin. He's a deacon. Test him, Lord. See, I was also being tested. I was being tested in preparing this message. You see, when we were looking for a home, when we were looking, me and my wife, we were looking for a home and our kids, we were being tested. We were being tested. I remember we was going through the internet. I mean, I was be waking up and I was just hearing my wife phone going, bing! And even 2 o'clock in the morning with our eyes half open, we look at the listing, close our eyes. We were being tested. We saw a really nice home. Really nice home. And it so happened that the pastor was speaking on God has his best for you. Dangerous line. When you're looking for a home. Very dangerous line. And you're sitting in here and Mm -hmm, yeah pastor God wants the best for me and you go and see a home that you can't afford and you say well God said test me in this so we saw the home and we saw the agent and it was good and so we went to the bank we did our homework we get approved we get approved uh, we went the real estate agent he, who asked us to drop all the claws you know this home is under value you're gonna get it and we were just praying our lives out father in the name of Jesus would you give us this home you know we've done our part and all this kind and hey we was using our faith action I mean he asked us to put more than they wanted and guess what we did I mean, in fact, when the, when the real estate agent came to our house and, he's, and he was about to walk with a paper, I said, give me that paper. He said, put it on the floor. I said, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, if this house is ours, would you give it to us? I mean, we anoint that paper. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wanted this house so bad, I, I just put a shame aside. I said, give me that paper. Let's pray. You see, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We lost the house. I came home and I goes, holy cow. <laughs> What's up with that? We ask ourselves. We prayed, we laid hands, we give more, we sow a seed. <laughs> Nothing happened. We lost the bid. It took us a while. It took us a while. For that to really sink in <laughs> you get emotional you know you get a little bit of uh, you know and uh, you know are you thinking well where's God God in this but God wants you to come up victoriously he wants to turn your mess into a message so he will continue to test you remember your faith is being tested just like the widow, just like Elijah. Just like Elijah. And as I go into the final landing, I'm just going to finish going a little bit deeper. Just a little bit deeper into the text. I'm going to read from verse 20. Then he cried out to the Lord, verse 20, Oh Lord my God, have you brought tra tragedy also upon this widow I am staying with? In fact, he's by causing her son to die. Then 
he stretched out himself then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried again to the Lord oh Lord my God let this boy's life return to him verse 22 says the Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy life returned to him and he lived Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room in the house he gave him to his mother and said with a smoke on his face here is your son it says uh, he carried him down from the room and he gave him to his mother and said look your son is alive then the woman said to Elijah now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is true people will always look at what you say and what you do to know if it's true you see here is how faith works here's how faith works in ending Elijah cried out to the Lord in a desperate and frantic manner he even began to question God and even seemed to accuse God of bringing tragedy you heard that before tragedy to the widow's home because of him sometimes when something happened and we we there we drive in the car and there's an accident and we says because of me because of me Elisha was just like us and he was also blaming himself as you saw in the text he said have you brought tragedy also upon the widow that I am staying with you see just like we all do when things seems rocky and unstable we find ourselves questioning God like if we owe like if he owes us something <laughs> like if we are his God but Elijah had had the experience and know-how because of his intimate time with God you see sometimes it's okay to question God I'm just saying that lightly but if we spend time in God's presence we will know his voice so when the trials come and you begin to question God the Spirit of the Lord will rise up inside you and say peace be still but you wouldn't get that peace if you don't spend time at that place so often you go through trials and there's no one to help you you act all well but you go in the room and cry yourself to sleep you act all well but you go in the bars and shoot up the shots you act all well that you're going home and break the house Elijah had the experience and know-how because of his intimate time with God so he was persuaded and did what God wanted him to do he kept on praying because he prayed to God and here why I said he was very persuasive as you read in the scripture it says here then he stretched out himself out on the boy three times that's where dude the boy was there dead 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 he was dead picture somebody dead lying down the Spirit of the Lord tell Elijah lie on that boy let the anointing from you flow let the transference of the Spirit of God flow hey I might be willing to try it one time but if it doesn't work I'm running the Bible said he tried it three times I don't want to lie no dead person three times one maybe but not three times how far are you willing to go with God how weird are you 
willing to look like to go with God. Elijah did. It took him three tries, even find himself stretching out over the dead's body. And he said to himself, whatever it takes, like we should do, like the lady should do. Until the boy began to return to life, the Bible says, and he lived. Do something, whatever it is God is asking you to do, until you begin to see it, live. Like God is saying to some of you here today, do it until it comes alive. Do it until it begins to live. Don't kill your dream. Don't kill going back to school. Don't kill coming to church. Don't kill owning a home. Don't kill buying a car. Until you see it come to pass, do it in Jesus' name. Because of that situation, because of the situation that Elijah brought the child back to life, you know what happened? The widow faith was encouraged. <laughs> because of Elijah's test, sometimes you are going through something, but your friend has a testimony. And because of their testimony and they give you your faith, you say, you know what? I can do it. I could stand my ground a little longer. If he could do it, I can do it. If she can do it, I can do it. Through Elijah's faith. As she witnessed her son being brought back to life. And watching the way Elijah handled himself. Sometimes God will use any means necessary to build your character. He was using it today. For me here this morning, when I didn't find a message for four weeks, and I find it at the fourth hour, any means necessary to build your character and build your faith in Him, even if it takes doing it through another person. You see, I told you that we didn't get the home. We prayed the prayer. We walked the walk. We sowed the seeds. That was then. You see, sometime later, we put that aside. But when the time was right, when the time was right, God began to bring back the house again to us. God began to bring back the phones, bing, that night. And we began, began to look. I remember the second to last set of homes we looked at was two homes at the Rouge. One on the left, one on the right. We like both. I like the one on the right. My wife like the one on the left. We came home and we didn't pray about it. We argued about it. Like we always do. Like many of you do here. But as we was arguing about it and talking about it, driving back, you know, my wife said, maybe this is too far. And then I said, Let's draw a line as to where we really need to be. You see, sometimes God will use a situation to get your attention and say, Okay, come on now. Come on now. Where do you really need to be? Can you really start save $10,000 or should you start with $10 in your account? Be real. <laughs> be real. And so we said, well, you know what? Uh, let's draw the line at Markham Road. Let's boundary. Let's draw the line at Markham Road. That's what we, I sense the Spirit of the Lord was saying. And we both agreed for a change. We both agreed for a change. It wasn't not too long, maybe within the week or a few days later, we saw a listing at the Friday night. Don't ask me the date. I'm not good at dates. I just know the date. It was a Friday night. And my wife said, let's go see it. There's, a, there, there's an open house Saturday. We saw it. It didn't. 
It wasn't the shock and awe, but it was, it, was, it was nice. It was everything we wanted in the first home. Everything we wanted. It's private, it was a rubbing lot, it had the this, it had the that. It was closer, on the budget. We put an offer in, 12 midnight. Call up the agent, faith without work is dead. Agents came up by us, 11, 11.30, we signed the papers, put it in, pray about it. Next they came back, sold. God supplied our needs. God's delay is never, ever God's denial. He didn't deny us. He gave us everything we wanted in the first at the price you could afford. At the place you wanted on the budget. That's God. I mean, you can get anything you want if you have the budget and then blame God. Sometimes we give God credit He don't deserve because we're doing it off of the flesh. Like telling someone to look good when they're not because you need a favor from them. Like, hey, Martel, hey, you're really looking spiffy because I want him to play for me. We so often do that. And we don't see the fruits. Motives. Because of that situation. The lady was tested. Elijah was tested. We were tested. If you want to be a testimony, God is going to test you. You see, we see it in the way God gave us this new home. I'm not speaking because I didn't see faith works I'm here because I see it I live it I didn't just read it somewhere in this book called the Bible I applied it so do you you have to apply it you see just like just ask Moses just ask Moses when Pharaoh and his armies was behind the children of Israel and the Red Sea was in front of them, what happened? God find a way. The Red Sea was parted. The Israelites walked through on dry land. That's God. See, even here as we build this process and when the money wasn't coming in and we said we needed money to build this place and the pledges wasn't coming in and things wasn't happening and people were leaving God parted the Red Sea with the few dollars and the bake sales and the garage sales and the hot dogs and the car wash God didn't give us no corporate sponsors Joe. he didn't need to do that he wanted us here to build our faith you see, sometimes we have trials and our trials is to test ourselves. The trial from God is to test ourselves. Or sometimes we see other people's trial and because we are with them, the Bible says bear each other's burden. And so we bear our sisters, our brother burden. And when we bear the burden, we also share in their joy. Because if God, God can't do it for you, He will do it through you. He will do it with you. But He'll always do it for you. God who sees and knows everything, every outcome, is never caught off guard. The children of Israel was crying and wailing. Ah, why did you bring us to kill us here, Moses? But the Red Sea was parted. The lady was about to pick up her last stick and baked her bread so she and her son would die but God sent something you see God was never ever caught by surprise instead he is waiting for us with the answer and his arms are wide open to help us fulfill our purpose here on earth we all have a purpose our purpose is not our job my purpose is not my job 
That's my provision. My purpose is not to work. It brings in the finance. That's not my purpose. Working is not your purpose. It's your provision. You still have a missing link. We need to work our purpose. Why we are here? Why did the prophet there? Why was the lady picking up sticks? Why was the first house turned down? What was the purpose? Why did I go to school? Why did I quit halfway? Is that your purpose? Your purpose is not your job. It's your provision. God is giving you that. So you would live and not die. It's not your purpose. You have a purpose in life. The Bible says for all the call. I didn't ask you to come up here and speak or to spend until four in the morning writing a sermon. No, God has a plan for you. <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11, my famous verse. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. And that's all of you. Every single one of us declared the Lord. It says a plan not to harm you. <laughs> a plan to prosper you a plan to give you a hope and a future then when you call on me the Lord would say I will hear your voice I will be your God and you will be my people that's what God wants for himself he called us because we are his people see in concluding remember to never lose focus remember to never lose faith remember to never fret why why these three F's focus faith and fret why because you have a God who is more than able to see that you never fails You see, <laughs> like my friend, I had a friend, my friend Errol. <laughs> you know, we went on a couple of, uh, couple of tours with him in, in Trenton, New Jersey. And uh, <laughs> in ending, he'll say, he'll say this, or he'll sing this. He'll sing this. And he says, who is the best you must confess? The J to the E, the S U S. So when you hear that negative voice coming in and somebody saying this, you say, who is the best? You must confess. The J to the E, the S, U, S. Jesus is here and he says, I am the way, the true, and the life. No man comes to the Father unless he comes to me, Jesus. Many have tried other ways and failed. They have gone to gods who has no names. They have read the Bible with no purpose. They have seen no provision. They have felt no peace. Because they didn't say, who is the best? We must confess the J to the E, the S U S. And end in, remember, when you need that peace, Call upon the name that's above all names. He said, the name of Jesus, every knee, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. 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 Hi, welcome back. And I trust the word of God has blessed your heart this morning. Uh, Dickie Neal is a man of faith. As you could tell in the service this morning in the message and I hope he's been able to stretch and challenge your faith uh, to keep on going in the Lord listen you can never outgive God God is a God of grace and mercy and he promised never to leave you nor forsake you in whatever situation you are I'm gonna pray with you right now that God would increase your faith in whatever area that area that you're asking God to come and expand and enlarge in your life I'm going to pray with you now that God would come and give you that faith, the faith of a mustard seed, 
to be able to see God do the impossible in your life because he's a God of the impossible. Why don't you bow your head with me as I pray for you right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for that listener, a person who is watching on our WHBC TV today that needs their faith encouraged and their faith strengthened in you. Would you come and strengthen them in their most holy faith? Father, whatever that thing, issue is that they need to step out this morning, I pray that you give them the tenacity and the boldness to step out with you in faith, knowing that they have you, the right man, on their side. Would you bless them? Would you please enlarge them and cause their faith to grow in that new venture that you're leading them to? In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Listen, if this message has blessed you, uh, send us a note. Send us a written comment and let us know how much uh, you've been blessed through our WHC TV ministry. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you again next week, same time. I'm Dr. Ty Adiboboye. God bless. Love you.